Have we finally given AI a tongue? Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the future. My name is Chris Calabugas, and once again, we're coming at you live from deep, deep, deep in the heart of Silicon Valley, California. We're talking AI, startups, and the future. Not necessarily those, and not necessarily in that order. If you're watching on YouTube, smack that subscribe button and hit that bell so you'll be notified when a new show comes online. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast service, please subscribe and please drop a note on Apple Podcasts. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Now, if you're not subscribed to my sister publication, AIDaily.us, AIDaily.us, it's a podcast, Top Breaking News in AI. That's right, folks. Top Breaking News in AI, curated by my team and spoken or recited or <laughs> read by our two new hires, Cassie Bishop and Ray Turing. That's right, folks. Cassie Bishop and Ray Turing are new hires who are reading the news that are cura is curated by my team. AIDaily.us, AIDaily.us, there's a podcast, as well as a blog. Check it out if you're interested in breaking news in AI. Because what I talk about here, I talk about AI that's happened over the last little while. Whereas if you want breaking news, in fact, the beautiful thing about AI Daily is that you hear about stuff that doesn't show up in other newsletters until two or three days later. So if you really want to be on top of everything, on top of the game, just listen to it once a day, five minutes or less. Come on. What do you have to lose? So what are we talking about today? Oh, yes. <laughs> so a couple weeks ago, I talked to you about Bender's Rule. So I came up with this idea called Bender's Rule. And what Bender's Rule is, is if you're familiar with the series Futurama, at the very beginning, Bender, the robot, was introduced as having a lifelong ambition to be a chef. And of course, the writers played this as a joke, is that they gave him the job of a chef for the crew of the Planet Express ship. And it turns out that he nearly killed them. Because as a robot, he does not have the sense of taste. He does not know how things taste. He cannot create dishes for humans because he has a lack of taste. So if you ask me, I mean, even if it's a human who has a lack of taste, then they shouldn't be cooking food, right? They can't taste the food. How can they possibly create food that's any good for humans, right? They have no sense of taste. And if you think about it, a lot of AI recipes that are out there, recipes that are created by AI, like if you go to a, your AI, go to your ChatGPT or Claude or Perplexity or any of these other AIs and ask it, for a recipe, just say, hey, can you give me a recipe for tomato sauce? It may turn out to be good, and it may poison you. What does it know? I mean, it goes back and looks at recipes that are already out there, and it might combine a few things that shouldn't be in there. In fact, there have been, there have been situations where blogs have actually asked ChatGPT or other AIs to create recipes, and they've put them on there, and people do the recipes, and they were like, they were like, poisoned. So... I wouldn't trust any AI-created recipes until now. That's right, folks, until now. It turns out there's a team, researchers, and where are these researchers? I'm not sure where these researchers are from. I will, I will, I'm sure I will find it here somewhere, but there are researchers. <laughs> I can't find it right now, but there are researchers at a university who've actually created that's right, folks. They have created a tongue for AI. They have given AI a tongue so the AI can taste. Let me see. Do I have it there? Yes. Penn State researchers have created an electronic tongue. That's right, folks. An electronic tongue that can taste certain foods. Now, is this the end of the bender rule? Is this the end of us saying I, AI can't cook for us. AI can't create recipes for us that are not going to poison us, that are not going to kill us. Well, I think we're a little aw far away from that yet. So they may have created an artificial tongue that can detect flavors. But how will it know what's a good flavor? I mean, sure, there's certain tried and true flavors that work for all of us. I mean, everybody knows there's, what is it, six flavors now with umami? We all know these flavors. Human beings know these flavors. But are we able, 
I mean, human beings can combine these flavors in certain ways to make new things, to make innovative new dishes. But do you think AI would be able to do the same thing? Do you think AI would be able to combine certain things based on taste and come up with something totally brand new that human beings would like? Possibly. We're not there yet. Possibly. But it probably won't be too long. Because if you think about it, right now, you can... Food researchers... Food science is amazing, by the way. If I were to do it all over again, food science might have been something I would want to go into because I love food. I think who doesn't love food? Everybody loves food. And the way they can take various chemicals and create and recreate the flavors of things is amazing to me. And the, I think that it really came to head when they, they created those Yido's chips, right? And Yido is a Greek specialty. It's uh, lamb and beef and tzatziki and tomatoes and lettuce and fries in in a pita wrap and they had that as i think they do this once a year they have four different flavors and they have people vote on these flavors so they produce four different flavors from that were submitted by people and they create they recreate they use food science to create these flavors these exact flavors i think one year it was a uh, cappuccino <laughs> cappuccino chip flavored lay chip, lays chips and i never tried them but if you try any of this, I mean, I know the Yidos ones were so perfect. They're almost 100% perfect flavor of the chip. And even this little greasy undertaste, like one of the things about eat lamb is that lamb has this slightly greasy undertone. And they were able to replicate this slightly greasy undertone in the chip. And I thought to myself, food science is so cool. You can basically replicate almost every flavor under the sun and you can create everything it's kind of like willy wonka and the chocolate factory where you can you can bite into one of these gobstoppers and and taste a turkey dinner you can do that today we have the ability to food science a turkey dinner in a candy so if we can do that then if you think about coupling that with ai can you imagine the amazing flavors that ai can come up with but it can't do any of that until it can taste. So hopefully this tongue that the Penn State researchers have created will do the job. That's it for me for today. See you next time. And until then, don't forget to think future.